Hello friends, in today's video I wanted to talk you through how I made this interesting looking uh, weathered jewellery box by transferring a photo onto a more complex background than just my normal usual white background. So I asked you guys on my social media, on my Facebook and my Instagram um, about a week ago I think or so, uh, if you would like to see a tutorial on how I made this jewellery box and you guys said yes and so basically in this video I used the exact same technique um, except that I used used more of a translucent wood stained kind of look instead of painted wood look but using this same kind of technique but acrylic paints or chalk paints instead you can achieve the kind of look that I got on this jewelry box. So if you wanted to use wood stain on your item it will need to be something that's made out of plywood or solid wood rather than MDF or anything like that because there's going to be no pattern for it to show through. So the first thing that I did was take off the hinges and the clasp off of it and then I applied several layers of this white wood stain that I have. This was my first time actually using this wood stain, I got it a while ago. This is also by Daily Art. I'm sure you'll be able to find white wood stain in your local DIY shops. So after I applied a few layers of this white wood stain, I sanded it down a little bit. So when you work with something that is very watery, it's going to lift the fibers of the wood. So the texture of the box is going to change from being nice and smooth to being a little bit more rough and you'll be able to actually feel the texture of the wood. So I gave it a light sand and it kind of sanded off some of the wood stain off of it, but which is absolutely fine because that was the kind of look that I was after. Uh, you could also do this same kind of thing with um, acrylic paints or chalk paints instead just water them down then I took a little bit of white acrylic paint and a little bit of black acrylic paint mixed it all together with water so that it's, it was more watery and I could use it as a wood stain and as you can see I just apply a little bit of it here and there wherever I feel like I want it to be and then I wipe the excess away and that's what kind of gives it this kind of effect. I wasn't sure where I was going with this jewellery box so you'll see me jump around um, a little bit here but in the end I actually ended up going for the same kind of look all over the jewellery box so instead of doing what I did I saw at the top of the jewellery box and then I decided that I'm going to do the rest of it in the same way. You could just do one step at a time on the whole jewellery box instead of what I did. So I keep doing this until I was happy with it and then I left it to dry for a little bit and once it was touched dry I took my sandpaper and I gave the box a little bit of a sand uh, to take some of the black off because I didn't want it to be too black. I was kind of going for a more of a um, almost moldy kind of look. It didn't turn out that way in the end. Um, and then I sanded some of the black off just to open up the white again. So this this technique that I'm using is very sort of layered. There's a lot of going backwards and forwards until you're happy with the results. So of course, you know, you can stop at any point that you would like. You don't have to do it in the same kind of way that I did. Um, and then after I had applied my black and I sanded the excess off, I applied a few more layers of this white wood stain over the top just to make it a little bit whiter again. Um, looking back at it now, I think that I should have just left it without adding any extra white on, over the top because the top of the box ended up looking a lot whiter than the rest of the box. So learn from my mistakes. And then I went ahead and I kind of um, repeated the same process that I did on the top, on the lid of the box. Um, on the rest of the body of the box. I did not touch the inside of the box. Um, as you will see later, I ended up just kind of painting it with watered down chalk paint, but you could definitely do this to the inside and the outside, and then it's definitely gonna all look the same. As you can probably tell, I'm not particularly happy with the way that this box turned out. I might go back to it and refinish it, but for now, I'm just gonna leave it as it is and see where it takes me. So once I had the rest of the body of the box um, painted in the same way, I go ahead and I prepare my lid for the transfer. So I applied three layers of my Wilco's gloss water-based varnish. And then once it was fully dry, I sanded it down using extra fine steel wool so that the surface was completely matte and as even as possible.
And then I went ahead and I applied the photo onto the top of my lid. So this photo, I found it on Adobe Stock Photos and I printed it using photo paper with my normal inkjet printer as I usually do. So you apply one layer of your gloss varnish onto your picture, then you quickly apply a layer of your gloss varnish onto your item. So in my case, my lid, and then quickly apply another layer of varnish over your picture again and then you flip it over apply it onto your lid or whatever you are transferring something onto and then i'm using my little old reward card and my rubber roller and i get as much of the excess varnish out as possible and roll it all on just to make sure that it's all stuck on there and um, and all of the air bubbles are out there's no like big chunks of varnish stuck anywhere and then i clean up the edges using a cloth so i left it to dry for about 12 hours maybe more um, and then I went ahead and I rubbed off the excess paper. So I just take a little bit of water in my bowl and then using my fingers, I rub the excess paper off until my picture shows up completely clear and there's no excess paper. To check that you have rubbed off all of the paper, just leave your box to dry for five, 10 minutes and then look at it. If you can see little white bits of fiber um, in places then you need to rub a little bit more. The key to this process is to go gently and try and not rub any holes in there. <laughs> and I also used a little bit of sandpaper to sand off the edges so that there were uh, so that there was no overhang. And then once I was happy that all of the paper was off, I applied another layer of gloss varnish over the top of it. And then I went ahead and I painted the inside. So like I said, I painted the inside using my white chalk paint. The chalk paint that I use is by Rustoleum. And I dip my brush in water to make sure that it's quite wet. And then I pick up a little bit of paint. And so it kind of creates this white wash. It's kind of like a chalky wood stain in a way. And so I applied one layer of that. And then once it was dry, again, I gave it a little sand. I also ended up sanding the body of the box a little bit more just to uncover some of the natural wood that was underneath because when I sanded the lid of the box, when I sanded off the edges, I ended up uncovering a little bit of the, of the natural wood that was underneath and so I wanted to make it uh, match a little bit. And then finally to seal it all off, I used my um, heavy duty wood varnish by Polyvine in dead flat finish. I ended up applying about three or four layers over the whole box. So it's very matte and, and it's very protected. <laughs> and then I just reapplied the hinges and the clasp back onto the box. I did think about maybe lining the inside, but I'm really not great at lining the inside. I absolutely can't stand doing it. It's like my least favorite part of what I do in general. Um, it never goes right for me no matter how hard I try. I'm just not good at anything that involves textile in general. So like I said, I'll probably leave this box for a while now and then I'll come back to it and I'll finish it all off. But I just wanted to um, to kind of show you how you can how you can also transfer your photos into more of a difficult, more of a complex background. It doesn't always have to be white. Um, so the, the way that it works is that any spaces that are white on your printout, um, they are spaces that have not had any pigment applied to them. So when your printer prints out a picture, instead of applying, it doesn't have white paint. So it leaves that spot blank. So when you go ahead and you transfer your picture, any spots that were white are going to show through 
the color that is underneath so technically you could apply you could do any kind of uh, color any kind of pattern underneath previously I've even done um, decoupage underneath so I applied some paper that had wood pattern on it and then I transferred a photo over it and it was like the photo was sitting on top of wood so um, I hope that makes sense but essentially that's what I wanted to show you how you can do that so the pictures that are gonna work best for this kind of technique are like black and white pictures pictures that have a lot of free background that can just kind of blend in so I hope that it made sense I hope that you learned something new from this video I'll, I'll probably have to do this again sometime and maybe do a more complex background with paints um, so that you can see a more drastic change let me know if you would like me to do that for you as always if you have any video suggestions let me know if you would like to connect with me on any of my social media then go ahead and click the links in the description they will take you there check out my Etsy shop subscribe if you want to see more and I will see you guys in the next video bye bye